Now uh, I have all of Miss FD's vocals here. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do actually is we'll insert a new track and we're going to make a vocal bus and we're going to select everything and we're going to change the color to let's go with like a pink and um, just because of the theme I'm using in Reaper I found that low luminosity values work really well if you use really bright ones they can be kind of a annoyingly bright and I pick pink just because she's always got pink hair. So that seems to make sense. And then what we'll do is I'm going to hit control R brings up the routing matrix. Again, I might've changed the, um, the hotkey, but that's my hotkey anyways. And right now all of these tracks, if I was to play them would go directly to the, um, to the master output and you would hear them. But, uh, these are all just the dry vocals, the raw vocal files. So they won't sound entirely right. Uh, because there's no effects on them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drag down and kill the uh, master parent send. So if I play the song now, you can see that the track has audio. You would hear her vocals, but because I I'm not sending them to the master parent send, you don't hear them. So now what I do is if I drag here, now they're all sent to the uh, vocal bus. So now when I play it, How far back can you can hear it? her vocals. So. Uh, what I want to do is before we even get started on the actual making of the song is just set the vocals up uh, with a couple of extra things. So we're going to insert a couple new tracks here. Uh, the first one we're going to do is uh, vocal reverb and we're going to send uh, the vocal bus. So all of the vocals now are being sent to the reverb and we're going to bring it down to something like negative 20 uh, is usually what I would do. And now what we'll do is we will pull up all of my VSTs and we're going to grab um, EOS 2. This is one of the best uh, reverb plugins you can get. And um, in fact, you can do this and make it really, really beautiful just so while we're looking at it, you can really dig in. Now, I can't remember if I have a preset. I don't think I do. So we can actually just, it's perfectly fine to make a little preset here. Let's find the, um, I think the chorus is over here. And what I'll do is I'll just grab a kind of like a little loop of it. I think this is the chorus. It doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure that I have a decent little chunk of audio here. So. Born into a mystery, our hearts are beating, beat. All right, what I want to do is actually for now, since we're working on the reverb, I'm going to turn it up a bit and then we'll turn it back down. Born into a mystery, our hearts are beating, beating. So we can really hear it. Um, honestly, the default doesn't sound so terrible. And what we can do too is we can just solo the reverb and we can get really precious with it. Um, what I actually should do is instead of soloing the reverb, I should turn the master parent send of the vocal bus out. When I soloed the reverb, it soloed, turned my mic off for a second. Um, so now we're listening to just the reverb, I think. Oh, we need to turn the mix all the way up. This reverb just sounds amazing. All right, so I'm gonna go back to plate one, turn the size down. Uh, this plugin size knob is kind of weird, but I actually really like these plate sounds on low sizes. Pretty low anyways. Uh, the diffusion's all the way up. Uh, let's look, I'm, I'm just trying to see some of this stuff. Uh, I'm gonna increase the pre-delay to maybe something like around 50 milliseconds. Uh, I'm going to set these multipliers to basically uh, not do anything. There's a low cut around 200 and a high cut around 6. With a vocal reverb, it's important, I think, to be uh, aware of the, uh, the high cut in particular because... Um, you want to make sure you get the, the to filter out some of the sibilance that can come on tss, tss, noises. They tend to really pop on a reverb, uh, and you know you can do things like DS the 
uh, incoming signal into the reverb, and that's useful, but it's it's an easy fix. It's just to bring the high frequencies down a bit. So, so you can see that two that's still popping. So, I think that's actually not a bad setting. And the high crossovers around one k. So that's pretty pretty good. Um, let me. See, um, what I want to hear now is to tighten the decay of the reverb as much as possible while still having it sound kind of big. So this this reverb sounds really huge most of the time. So uh, I actually like pretty tight vocal plates because, you know, there's something cool about on like ballads and stuff having these really big, expansive um, vocal, vocal reverb characters. But in general, to get kind of an up, up front in your face vocal, you just don't need too much you know it tends to kind of blur things so yeah i like it better there all right this is actually a pretty good uh reverb uh already i think it, it sounds really good what we'll do is we'll open up uh re -EQ, which is i use re -EQ for everything it's a stock eq in reaper and uh, a lot of people might be like well you know, why don't you use like some really cool, fancy analog model uh, EQ? And the answer is I used to, and I've actually found that my mixes got a lot better when I broke my analog modeled plug-in addiction. So uh, what I'm going to do is kind of a weird thing maybe, but I'm going to find a frequency I like somewhere in this mid-range between 500 and 3K, somewhere in there, and um, boost it, uh, and we'll use a gentle slope. And that's just to help focus the frequencies. Um, what I, when I would listen to, uh, impulse responses of, a of a real, um, plate, I want to, I, I don't want to get the model number wrong, but like, there's a really famous vocal plate and I was listening to it. It was like really rather dark sound. It's not as bright as you'd think what you think of when you think of a plate reverb. And, uh, it was, it had a bump in the mid range and it sounded amazing in the mix. I was like, wow, this thing's like better than any reverb I've ever heard. And I don't know why. And so what I found is actually slightly darkening the reverb a bit more than I would like. Cause I like really bright, expansive, whatever reverbs and finding a mid range frequency that helps kind of just uh, cut through. So we'll just kind of play around a bit. So if you get up too high, you start getting these really like annoying frequency. And then by the time you're like around 500, you get the real woofy like dirt. So I think right around uh, 1500 is, is good. And what we'll do is we'll turn it all the way down or I'll, I'll show you the shape here. I want to actually widen it a bit. So we've got a pretty big, um, pretty big boost here. Uh, I might even use all the way like that. Uh, let's cut it down a little bit. We're going to use a really wide because what I want to do is actually just sort of emphasize that region a bit. In some sense, I'm thinking about actually kind of turning down the other regions. I just want to have a little bit of focus in that sort of vocal upper mid range frequencies, you know, for the reverb. Uh, and that will just help get the reverb out of the lows, which is so critical with a reverb. You don't want the reverb to just sort of drown out uh, all of that that frequency. And also the highs. It's it's like I love highs and reverb, but when you're talking about a mix, especially vocals, it's like those high frequencies are what really can can pop in a nasty way. So anyways. I just want to add a bit. And I'll just turn down the reverb or the uh, EQ a bit, volume match it, let's say. All right, so let's listen to these vocals real quick. It's with the EQ on. And let's listen without the EQ. It's not doing too much, so I actually boost it up a little bit more, I think. You can definitely hear it then. Yeah, 
It just seems to be adding a little bit more into that frequency. On its own, it's almost slightly, slightly annoying, but <clears throat> in the uh, in the mix, I think it'll be really good. So, and we can always uh, change it as we go. So, I'm going to turn the vocal uh, the vocals back on and uh, bring this down quite a bit. The trick with reverb, in my opinion, is to try and have as little of it as possible, but there still have the feeling of it there. You can oftentimes sort of subconsciously pick up on it, but it's not great. Um, I'm a big fan of, um, I don't know, I don't want to say dry mixes because if you listen to the song I did with Miss FD off of her most recent record, Transcendence, um, Delirium, it it's like, the whole thing is caked in reverb, but on, only certain layers. Certain layers are completely dry. Some layers are mostly dry, uh, like the drums and the vocals are, I think, completely dry, unless um, unless she added some more on right before it went out, it got printed. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think makes it sound better, drier than most of the time mixing artists tend to want to use the reverb because they have these really beautiful, awesome reverbs. I'm guilty of this. Um, but they're, they tend to be better if they're a little drier. So what I'm going to do is just kind of try to find a thing. Negative 20 is my average number or starting point, but you know, depending on the reverb character and everything, you sometimes need a mo little more, a little less character of the song. Born into a mystery, our hearts are beating, beating. Hungering for significant. I really like these vocals and think they sound great. So I don't want to use too much, but we'll do narrative 20 for now. Yeah, I really like the, um, it's really tight and it's going to be really cool when we're done with it. All right, so what we'll do now is we will uh, do another send and we'll send and we'll call this track uh, vocal delay. And you notice that the, um, the, when I typed in reverb here, it changed colors. That's because uh, I have a setting in the SWS extensions here. Um, <clears throat> where is it? SWS options. Auto track coloring. Yeah, so you can set up track colors and stuff like that. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll, I don't have one set up for uh, this. We'll make it kind of an orange color and we'll set this down to 20 or so. And so now we have a delay, and we'll just go to Rhea Delay, open that, and now we can play with this. And I'll do the same thing. I'm going to cut the reverb and uh, disable the master sense. We're just listening to the to the echo now, or the delay. Right now we have just one delay, and it's set uh, to. Uh, I think a quarter note uh, afterwards, or maybe it's a half note, right? Because it's four eighth notes, uh, and it's there's no um, there's no feedback, and so therefore it's just one delay. It's just a perfect copy. So now we can play with this. Um, right now there's the dry signal and the wet signal, but we'll turn the dry all the way off. So now we're just hearing the echo. So it'll sound like just one. Not just sound like the track, but we're actually hearing it. A uh, half note behind what it would be. All right, so what we'll do is we'll increase the feedback. Right, so that's pretty cool. Now, what we can do is make this a little bit uh, wider. And, uh, well, first, what I like to do is actually increase a high pass and a low pass filter to this. So we'll bring this down to, we'll, we'll play with it, but I think around 5k. Actually like a little bit higher on her voice. It's really great sounding, just, it's letting the main vocal have all the sibilance, all the high end, and it's not getting in the way of that. But it's still very, you know, it's still relatively full range signal, so it doesn't sound too much. And then just a high pass filter sometimes can help. We might not even need it for FD's voice because she has a, you know, you can hear my voice versus hers. I have a lot more uh, booty on my voice, a lot more low end, so. Born into a mystery, our hearts are beating. So like at this point, it's only unusable. 
Hungering for significance, we're believing, believing. Born into a mystery, our hearts are beating, beating. I don't know if I want it actually. Hungering for significance, we're believing, believing. Uh, it's helping. Shaping the Born into a mystery, our hearts are beating, beating. Around there, it's too much. So we'll just keep it kind of relatively. That's just helping get something like the plosive pop uh, that's often, uh, you know, high uh, bass content there. So what we'll do is I'll turn the dry back on maybe a little bit low just so we can focus on the uh, delays here. And uh, we'll add a tap and it'll be the same settings as what we had before. So I'll disable it for a second so so we can hear what we're working with so we have this really great great um we have a really phenomenal uh delay already now what i'm going to do is uh shorten this so we'll have the same delay but it's going to be uh, a quarter note instead of uh, a half note, so. So it's a little chaotic sounding, but if you bring it in. We have a lot of movement now. I really actually like with the way this vocal passage is the um, the half note is just great so what I was going to do is fade the quarter notes to one side and the half note to another but I want to experiment real quick and actually add another uh, delay and what we'll do is we'll pan this one uh, hard to the left and this one will pan hard to the right and we'll use a um, an in-between of a half and a quarter note, which will be sort of like an eighth D note, if uh, you're familiar with that. So that'll be uh, adding in a little bit of rhythmic interest. So let's see how this sounds. And I have the left and right uh, quarter and quarter D uh, delays active, but not the half. Born into a mystery, our hearts are beating, beating. So you have this back and forth ping pong action. Really cool. And then I'm going to add the down the middle half note. Shaping the future by forgiving the past. All right, so there's a there's a little too much rever or uh, delay going on right now. So what I'm going to do is I'll enable uh, I'll delete this tap for a second. So now we're just listening to the wet uh, left uh, quarter note delay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to low pass this further. get it really dark right now i can do the same thing as i had before i'm going to uh <laughs> add a tap and make it a third right it's almost a little jarring when you listen to it like that now once i add this back in the future by forgiving the past making room for love to last our dreams rising together let's see how it sounds now all right so i like this but i want to get these even further so i'm going to bring them down in volume because I really like the um, the the half note. I want that to be the main character of the delay, but I like the the stereo effect and sort of rhythmic interest of the other delays. All right. So what I'm going to do is check this. I forgot what I'm sending it to. Uh, yeah, the vocal delay is now set. It's just a direct, there's no reduction in the gain. 
Uh, and what's great about uh, Reaper or the Reaper plugins is I can actually control that right here. So I can, I don't have to worry about it. Um, so I'm going to just start with something like this or, um, well, we might as well just do it here, whatever. Normally I would do it in, in here, but since I'm kind of going to be showing you what I'm doing as I'm going, it might be easier to control it directly from here. So anyways, I'm going to turn the master send back on and we can control how much delay we want. Born into a mystery, our hearts are beating, beating. A lot of delay. Hungering for significance, we're believing, believing. Born into a mystery, our hearts are beating, <coughs> beating. Kind of like it in this neighborhood. Not too much. I might even bring it down, but I really like the delays and it might sound weird. It's like, well, I just spent all this time like getting the delay to sound kind of really neat and now I'm going to hide it. Well, that's just what mixing is, I guess. Born into a mystery, our hearts are beating, beating. Hungering for significance, we're believing, believing. So we have a lot of really cool interest there. It actually sounds like I could turn the, uh, the vocals, like the ratio of reverb to delay up a little bit. Um, but since I liked where the reverb was at before, I'm actually going to just turn the delay down a bit, maybe bring it down to something like this. Born into a mystery, our hearts are beating, beating. And there's really no point trying to set these two accurately right now, because as we go into the track, it's really going to matter what the track sounds like. It doesn't matter what it sounds like track. Uh, so I could do a couple of different things to actually start working on the music for this track. A lot of times I've started with drums in the past. Um, today, what I think I might do is just start with uh, a basic piano sound and Omnisphere and then kind of work it from there. So 